tanks in World War I were lumbering heavy metal beasts from hell, but in the Great War Western Front they work differently. So let me and your fellow players give you some advice on how best to use and also how to counter them in this game. When deploying tanks in battle it is important to realize they are fast. Much faster than you would expect if you know anything about the Great War. This is simply a consequence of time limited battles in this game. Another important thing to keep in mind is that tanks boost the morale of nearby infantry, their white bar, meaning they are designed to be used with infantry in close support. And they also reduce morale of enemy infantry just at a much shorter range. But that rarely works out in practice due to the abundance of artillery in this game. But we will get to that. From my own experience, when deploying tanks in the offensive or defensive battles, they have proven to be the fastest and most reliable way of destroying enemy artillery positions. Because they are not slow in this game, they can drive around enemy artillery volleys when they get targeted and if microed well. But you do have to give them air cover with fighters. Tanks deal fast and direct damage at medium range, can take a lot of pounding from infantry and gun emplacements, but can't drive in forests or hide in them naturally. They can roll over basic infantry trenches, but not the improved and advanced trenches. Light artillery barrages do very little damage against them, heavy artillery does better, but bombers deal the highest single damage. Yes, you can also damage them with infantry and especially with the assault companies which carry lots of grenades. But getting into range and staying alive long enough to deal damage with them is very hard to actually do and costly when it comes to supply points. Bombers carry far fewer risks for a similar price while dealing more damage. Tank on tank battles are not really cost efficient and are quite risky to your own tanks because they are easy targets during these duels. But there is a way to combine a few of these elements into anti-tank tactics which will help you deal with enemy tanks in seconds and I will show you how to do so in this guide. Like in my previous videos on attacking and defense, here too I will give you a perspective from two different battles. One where I used the German colossal tanks and some captured British ones, and the other with those tiny French tanks manned by Americans. Bonus clips are of the German anti-air vehicles. I want to thank all the players who have posted their tips in the comments of my previous videos and ask you to do the same under this video so everyone can benefit from your tips. Also feel free to ask questions and you will be pleasantly surprised how many players will help you out. The battle where I play with German tanks is a simple top down battle, while the second where I use the French tanks as the allies is a much more complicated left to right fight with mixed objective points. I also have to point out that combining infantry, artillery, tanks and planes in the Great War Western Front has proven to be the most effective way of quickly taking over objectives. But as long as you have spent the time and supply points to A take out enemy observation balloons and B to take out their artillery. In the opening of this battle I almost got my tanks vaporized by the massive underground TNT explosion the allies set off at my X objective, but some of my infantry units were not as lucky. The enemy AI followed up the massive trench explosion with an infantry attack and you can see how it tries to predict my tank's movement and set a heavy artillery bombardment in its path. I avoid it easily and this is where the tank's speed and maneuverability really helps you out by letting them turn on a dime. Now let's see how the enemy tank does against my trenches and how I can deal with his infantry attack. As I mentioned, infantry can mass against the tank and deal damage to it, but if you suppress them with an artillery barrage, those infantry units can't shoot back at the tank as it mercilessly mows them down with multiple machine guns and cannon. Yeah. 
since tanks are much faster than infantry, you can repeat this process once the tanks are at a safe distance again and let them pick off infantry as they get suppressed again by new light artillery barrage. Now the enemy tank has been doing a lot of damage in my line as well, blowing up my anti-aircraft vehicle and my balloon a bit later while taking limited damage from all my infantry, one heavy artillery barrage and that AA vehicle. It is only after it takes some friendly artillery fire, as well as fire from my three tanks, does it start to lose health faster and finally blows up. And this is one of the fastest ways to destroy enemy tanks. Let them engage one of your tougher targets, like a tank, they will stop when at short range, and then you pile artillery on their location, preferably from heavy cannons, and fire at them with everything you've got until they blow up. One more thing you should remember when using your own tanks against enemy infantry is that you can drive them diagonally or in parallel to enemy infantry and they will keep shooting at them, while also being outside of their cone of fire and possibly even their range of fire. Meaning you can pick off entire companies of infantry units while basically driving circles around them with your tanks. This will definitely not match what you have seen in many World War I movies or read in books, as infantry was able to basically move on foot and stick grenades and bombs into tanks which didn't have infantry backup. Not so in this game. Now I will give you another example of a tank versus tank battle, and a 3 versus 1 at that. The speed at which they can fire is amazing, and it doesn't take more than a few seconds for a whole tank to be blown up, especially if softened up by artillery first. Do take note to move your tanks one by one, because as soon as you move them together, they will bunch up and a single enemy artillery barrage can deal a lot of HP damage to them. Keeping them spread apart is the way to go. And on top of that, send out fighter air superiority missions in their path to clear the skies of enemy bombers which can deal a lot of damage to your tanks. Once you have located enemy artillery positions, sending in your tanks, bombers and suppressing enemy artillery with your own will let you blow up those guns very easily. This will give you artillery supremacy for the rest of the battle. I have found that using tanks for this purpose helps you the most to later take over enemy objectives and also defend objectives with ease, as your infantry entrenches can't be suppressed anymore. These tanks do have to drive around forests, which is an inconvenience and it can also be dangerous if the forest has enemy trenches manned by grenade assault companies of infantry. Now on a less straightforward map, like this one for example, where there are a lot of ways to attack enemy objectives diagonally, it becomes even easier to get your tanks to enemy artillery positions. Usually these are around the enemy's main command trench. The problem is that these small French tanks are not up to the task of dealing with German hulks, and especially not without support or overwhelming number superiority. On top of that, if you have to move, so will the enemy and that makes using artillery barrages against those tanks far less effective. The bombers though are a game changer, as you can see here where they almost blow up an enemy AI vehicle with two bombs in quick succession. Doubling up or even using a triple artillery strike on moving enemy tanks will help you deal a lot of damage quickly, but it is not an efficient use of supply points. The one saving grace of these small ally tanks is their speed, as they can move up to enemy artillery positions very quickly and help you get rid of them in the opening of the battle. Of course, the enemy can do the same to you, and since bombers take a while to arrive and start dropping bombs, you can lose your own artillery quickly if the enemy tanks find them, like you can see here happening to me. And artillery, unlike tanks, cannot be brought back to the battlefield mid-battle. If you have managed to take out enemy observation balloons in a battle while keeping your own up and operational, you just might be able to keep pounding enemy tanks as they stand at their staging grounds next to their objectives. I managed to do so in this battle and it allowed me to deal massive damage to enemy tanks which rarely moved. One more important thing is how your tanks can help your infantry stay in a trench melee battle longer if you park your tanks close to them. 
This is because of their morale boosting ability I mentioned before. It adds this additional blue morale bar onto their default white one and helps them remain in battle longer, preventing a rout. As explained, tanks have many uses, but you do have to micro them fast and also babysit them because of enemy artillery and bombers. For more of my guides, use the card on the screen. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!